Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group and Discipleship Director here at FaithBridge, and I'm here with Timothy Atik from Vertical Ministry, Bible teacher who just brought us a message around difficult people. And you used a passage from Genesis, yep. yet where we looked at Jacob and his relationship with his father-in-law. Yep. And I have to tell you, your message on difficult people, it definitely hit a nerve and a strain um, with the congregation, with myself as well, because I think everyone can relate to um, having people, whether it's in your workplace or in your family or in your friend group or yep. just out in public that yeah. you run into someone who you would say is a challenge or is difficult to deal with. Um, and I love how you started by looking at ourselves. Yeah, I don't it. struggle with being difficult, but I know that so many well, other people, people do. So that's why I wanted to just, yeah, crazy. you're welcome. And yeah. I love how you started with looking at ourselves yeah. um, as well. So, um, you know, we'll kind of start there then. Let's talk about that. Um, you know, if you're looking at yourself, this person did and said, you know, I'm recognizing the ways that I can be difficult. Yeah. Um, how do we begin then to transition into becoming a more loving, faithful person? Yeah, if, you, if you're realizing that you're a difficult person, then, you know, one of the best things you can do is, uh, is invite people into your life who can just speak truth to you. You know, I think about like the, those distorted mirrors inside of the crazy houses at the mall carnival places it just reflects a distorted image of yourself and and a lot of times if you're if you're trying to discern how difficult you are on your own you're just going to see a distorted picture of yourself you're either going to think you're more difficult than you are which isn't normally the case usually you try and see the best in yourself which is good but you end up not really realizing just how difficult you be you can be so you need to invite people into your life which is a really humbling thing but especially if it's a spouse or someone like that, but to sit down and say, hey, I, I need you to just kind of help me see, here's how I think I'm difficult, but then tell me the specific ways that you notice me being difficult. And so the first step is to identify the, the, the key places where you have a tendency to go the wrong direction mm -hmm. in life. Because when you can, when you can identify those key places, so if it's if it's when you're tired or, you know, when, you know, if it's a certain situation with your kids or certain kind of sticking points for you and your spouse, if you can identify those things, then come up with a battle plan with other people around you who can hold you accountable so that you can put that battle plan into practice. But also, I know for me, if I have people who are going to ask me every week, how are you doing specifically with this? It changes things because it makes me more aware of, of you know, what I'm doing. The other thing is, you know, knowing the word of God is really powerful. You know, when Jesus was battling temptation in the desert, how did he combat Satan? He com combated him with the word of God. So you find specific ways that you're being difficult, if you can attach certain scriptures to those things, memorize it, meditate on those throughout the day, I promise you in those instances when you're tempted to be difficult, the Spirit will bring truth to mind and it can really diffuse the situation. Yeah, good word. Okay. All right, so let's turn our attention to um, just being in relationship with a difficult person, um, whether it be a boss where I mean, this is someone that you're seeing every day yep. who's difficult, or a spouse, or maybe a family member. Um, how can, you, you know, you say try not to, not to react to the difficult yeah. person, but how can you do that? What are some ways that we can? Yeah, I think that this is the big question for people is, yeah, that sounds good in theory to respond to God instead of react to the person, but what does that, that truly look like? I'll just give you a few really practical real practical things. You know, growing up, I grew up with a dad who's a clinical psychologist, which means I got free therapy for life, which is a really good thing. But I just remember growing up, he always used to say, you know what, listening doesn't mean agreeing. Like to let someone say something to you 
without responding, that doesn't mean that you're agreeing with them. And I think that so many times, the reason that we react is we need to stick up for ourselves, we need to be right, we need justice to prevail in the moment. And the sooner we can realize we live in an unjust world and there's gonna be times where people say things to us that, that sting. And, and it, there's times where, I mean, you can fight back, but in the end, it's not gonna go it's not gonna go well for you. And so listening doesn't necessarily mean agreeing. If your spouse says something, you know what, the reason that conflicts between spouses go from five minutes to five hours to five days is because we feel like we have the right to be right. So we wanna win, we wanna win the battle. And when you wanna win, you will lose. And so if you can just, if you can bite your tongue and just say, you know what, listening doesn't mean agreeing. And then, especially if it's, if it's with a spouse to come back at a later time when you're not in the heat of the moment to say, you know what, what you said really hurt me. And if they won't listen then, again, that's, a, that's another issue of them being difficult. But I think that's the first thing. And then number two, when it comes to reacting, especially, I know this with, with my wife, if we're in an argument, I promise you, if I can just pause, and ask myself this question, if I can invite God in in the moment and just say, God, how do you want me to respond in this moment? If I could just allow myself to ask that for a second, it changes everything, I promise you. And it takes our fights from, you know, five hours to five minutes. It really can just cause things to, you know, it, it can shrink things, shrink the severity down. The bottom line is you are going to have difficult people in your life. There are people who are going to say things that really do hurt. And, um, you know, the reason that it can cause so much turmoil is that we feel like we need to defend ourselves and we need to be, we need to come out on top of the other person. But when you look at the example that Jesus displayed for us on the cross, he won by losing. He did. He won by dying, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, he stood before Pilate and he didn't say a word. I mean, that's incredible. When Pilate was asking him to give a defense, everyone's hurling accusations at him. And what did he do? It said he remained silent. And so I think that there is something to that, to be able to bite your tongue, listening doesn't mean agreeing, and responding to God, just saying, God, how do you want me to respond? Maybe it means sitting here silently in fear in this person thinking that they beat me. Can I be okay with them believing that they won, knowing that in the end, they're losing, if that makes sense. It does, it does. And so we had quite a few questions come in that were full of very specific, very hard, very difficult situations and challenges that people are facing. Yep. Um, broken relationships, um, just, just a lot of pain and a lot and a lot of hard things that they're walking through. Um, probably too specific and too hard to get into every single one of them here. Yeah. Um, but I but I did want to bring them up and just say what what counsel, what advice, what wisdom do you have for those type of situations? Yeah. yeah, I will say I think the hard thing is that when I address an issue like this, you know, I have forty minutes to to basically get everyone to identify with the fact that they can be difficult and the, speak to the fact that they're dealing with difficult people. And so the thing, the hard thing for me is that what I don't want people doing is taking everything that I say and applying it to all of their situations and just taking the, the small amount of time that I had to speak truth and believing that, it, that, that they can kind of work it into every area of their thing. Well, here's what I mean. So if someone is in a very abusive, especially physically abusive situation, I hope that they don't sit in there and say, well, I just need to, I just need to be okay with that. And I just need to allow myself, I just, I have to put up with that. No, um, there, there might need, there might need to be some physical space there for you to get out of a very hostile environment. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, the hard thing for me is that people, I think sometimes people want me to give them per permission to bail on a relationship just because they're tired of it. Mm -hmm. And so I think 
I, I think it's good for me to say we, I, I can't begin to address your specific situation in this short video. What I would encourage you to do is if you feel like you are in a very difficult situation with a difficult person, you absolutely need an outside perspective that I can't give you just on camera right here. And so you need to invite some community into your life. I, I would first say you invite maybe a small group into it, people who love God, love His Word, and love you, to give you a perspective, outside perspective. And if they can't give you an unbiased perspective, um, then I would encourage you to seek out pastoral counseling from the church or even professional counseling. We all need counseling. That's why the Holy Spirit is called the counselor because we all need counseling. And so do not be afraid. Do not just take this talk and try. Do not let this, let this talk just be the, the tipping point that, that causes you to take action and seek out more wise counsel. Okay, so that would be my encouragement is to say, yes, I would imagine some of you are in very difficult situations that I can't begin to speak to now, but someone does need to speak into it. Um, and so please seek out that, that help. Good. And I like the encouragement that you gave us about starting our day before our feet hit the floor. Yeah. And this person wrote in and said that they want to make index cards for their family to keep on the nightstands so they can pray it every morning. So could you go through those yeah. three things for us again to encourage us? And I love that they're making index cards, putting it on the nightstand, because I know for me, when I, when I hear something that I want to put into practice from a sermon, if I, don't, if I don't have some tangible way of reminding myself to do it, I just don't do it. I might do it for the first day and then it's just off the radar because life is hectic. So I do encourage, I mean, the great thing is that we have so many different ways now with technology that we can remind ourselves to do things. So the three things are, number one, before your feet hits the ground, when your eyes open in the morning, just affirm what you know to be true. Just say it to God. Say, God, my way of doing things today will be wrong. Your way of doing things will be right. So I, I want to say yes, even from now, to your way of doing things. That's what I want to do. Um, the, the second thing is to ask God to just show you the times where you are being difficult, that he would really illuminate them, that they would kind of smack you in the face that you would know, okay, this is a time where I'm being difficult. Because when you finally realize it, that's when you're going to begin to desire change. And then the third thing, great prayer to pray every morning is just God, fill me with your spirit that I might bear the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. We all need those. So invite that into your life. And I promise you, you do those three things. It's not just going through the ritual of those things, but it's actually living those things out. I promise you, you're going to see change. It might not be an overnight transformation, but slowly but surely, the goal is just take a step. You see a little bit more fruit than yesterday. That is a win for sure. That's good. That's good. Well, it was, it's always a pleasure to have you with Thanks. us. Thank you again. And good to see you again. Yep. Thank you for your message. And thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.